where we want to be. So thanks, Randy. Um, I was starting to kind of capture my thoughts on paper. I decided to start with the definition of stewardship. As a verb, stewardship is the act of caring for or improving with time, the careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. As a noun, stewardship is the rank or office of being a steward. So I thought, started thinking about, well, who are God's stewards? I, I think it's us. I think we are God's stewards. Would you agree? And so then I started thinking about what are some blessings that God has entrusted to, to me and to each of you as stewards? And so I think of it in terms of my time, my talent, my treasure, but maybe you are thinking of something more specific and feel free to throw it out there if you want. Um, you know, I just think about this place. I think about our relationships, our friendships, our families. Um, the fact that we woke up alive this morning and we're sitting here breathing in these pews. Um, our ability to care and love and receive love and care. All of those things I think are blessings from God. And, and then I started to think about, okay, so, so God has blessed us, and, and why, you know? And I, I know one of our favorite offertory sentences, my favorite offertory sentence is, all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. And so we're blessed, okay? We're blessed, so what? Do these things, what now? Do they belong to us? Do these blessings belong to us? Do we own these things? I, I don't think so. I think God is the owner of these blessings. Psalm 24 says, the earth and everything in it, the world and its inhabitants belong to the Lord. So we pledge and give proportionally to joyfully return uh, the first fruits of the blessing God has entrusted to us to carry out the ministries that that we have here at St. Paul's and in the world, to just live that out in our lives and in our actions. And um, I know we're talking specifically about uh, treasure at, during stewardship time, and we'll, you know, everyone will be asked to pledge. And don't be intimidated by pledging. No pledge is too small. You know, if you aren't pledging right now, start with a small amount, you know, whatever feels right to you and go from there. It'll really change your life and the way that you think about all that you have, and, and you'll find that you will grow in gratitude. Um, and I, I want to talk about the ministries here at St. Paul's that our, our pledges make possible with God's help. So one of my favorites is the Friday night barbecues. Um, do you guys have any that come to mind that you are really... Um, oh, and, and then the... When we, when we open our sanctuary and parish hall in the really bitter cold, like the two or three degree temperatures, and we keep, literally keep probably 40 people from freezing to death at night. We open this up and we, and we let people stay in here and stay warm and we feed them. And all that's made possible because of your commitment and St. Paul's and, and God entrusting that ministry to us. Um, and, and then I guess I wanna say too, um, when we, we give these blessings back to God now, in this time and in this place, but, but I have to remember that um, we're here now because we stand on the shoulders of saints who were members of St. Paul's before us, um, and it, we go way back. Our congregation goes back to 1866 as a mission Sunday school that that met in um, Blow School and uh, a place called Lafayette Hall. Um, the first vestry was elected in 1868. You know, that's like Civil War times. Like, it, we began meeting the year after the Civil War. So um, then a man named Henry Blow donated some property to build a church. He was a very rich guy. He was very successful. He was an industrialist, a U.S. ambassador, a congressman. And um, then we actually outgrew that, that original church and moved to this location in 1890. The rector, Reverend Goenlock, chose the architecture. 
The building cost $14,000, which was double, <laughs> double what had been budgeted, which makes me kind of giggle, and you know why. Um, <laughs> the cornerstone was laid in 1911, and St. Paul's congregation at that time paid off the building debt in 1924. The building was consecrated in 1925 by Bishop Frederick Johnson. More recently, we have stewards like the McGraths, Gloria and Scotty Hartman, a woman named Hattie, Bob Bowling, and Jack Foshage, whose ashes are interred in our memorial garden, and others have made bequests to St. Paul's upon their death over the, over the recent past. So they remembered St. Paul's in their estate planning because they understood that stewardship is about now, but also about the future. And, and this goes back to the stewardship definition I just read you, the act of caring for or improving with time. So their bequests continue to fund ministry now. They, um, those bequests are in our reserve funds in the Diocesan Investment Trust. You've maybe heard us talk about that. And, and the, our DIT fund helps us cover operating expenses that we frankly are unable to pay with our annual pledges. We have more expenses than we have income. So we take about 30 or $60,000 from the DIT fund every year um, to help us bridge the gap. And it's exactly what those saints gave that gift to do, to make sure that we can keep going and keep doing the work that God has entrusted to us. So um, our giving in the present now is, is a stewardship bridge, if you think about it that way, kind of a bridge between the past and the future. What we do now together honors those who gave in the past and will empower our future gen congregation for decades to come. And imagine the impact of that. It's like ripples on the surface of a pond growing wider. It doesn't just stop here, it just keeps going. There's not a way for us to really measure the impact that St. Paul's makes in the world and in the lives of our congregation, people who come here to be fed. There's so many ways that we are dropping that pebble in the pond and starting those ripples. Um, so I'm, I'm sure that members of St. Paul's in the 1860s who met in somebody's living room to say some prayers and, and read the Bible, they could not have imagined Heim House as a refuge for a family from Africa. So, and, the, and like that, the future is uncertain for us. We have no way of knowing what we do here and now of, of the impact that will be in the world after we're gone, that there will be impact. What we do matters greatly, and there will be lasting impact. So um, the future is uncertain for us, but we have God and we have our faith. And finally, I'll leave you with the collect appointed for today in the common lectionary. It's sort of a old, I don't think we read it this morning. I was late as usual. Um, <laughs> so here we go. It's Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Angela. I want to also announce that uh, Aunt Charlene is going to, Charlene Roberts, this is her final Sunday with us. She is going to be returning to Virginia to be with uh, her friends and family there. And so let's keep her in our prayers.